Welcome back to Green is Good. This is the Go Green edition of Green is Good. And we're so honored to have with us today Sarah Nelson. She's the co-founder and in charge of special ops at the Fremont Brewing Company. Yes, thank you for Welcome having Welcome to Green is Good. I'm thrilled to be here. And we're going to be talking about not green beer in terms of St. Patrick's Day or something like that, mm -hmm. but the sustainability revolution coming to the brewing industry. Yes. You know, Sarah, before we get talking about Fremont Brewing, can we share a little bit about your journey in sustainability and uh, leading up to the founding of Fremont Brewery and then the greening of Fremont Brewery? Okay. So my personal history is that I'm a longtime do-gooder, and I, uh, I decided to get a PhD in anthropology because I wanted to change the world through blowing students' minds like mine was blown in college. So that's why I came up to Washington from California to get my PhD in anthropology, realized that um, you know, academia wasn't for me. Ended up working for a local council member, Richard Conlon, who had a very strong sustainable agenda. And in the course of implementing his policy initiatives, I learned a lot about the city of Seattle sustainability programs. I learned about zero waste principles. I learned about incentives. I just I, I learned a lot about uh, the nexus between municipal government and the private sector. And uh, it's great because I was able to see really at local government. It's not as sexy as national or international politics, but local governments you really can see decisions implemented on the ground. So. Uh, right up the street from us, the new transfer station is being built that you know, Richard and I helped uh, design. So the point is that it was through government work mm. and academia that I became interested in, in sustainability as a core value. My husband was an environmental activist, went to law school to become an environmental lawyer. There are about five jobs in environmental law in Seattle. So uh, because he was, yeah, you have to be Harvard, Yale, Georgetown. So, wow. um, but he was a home brewer. And so he got funneled into uh, beverage law and realized that he wanted to make his dream come true instead of, you know, continue contracting and, and establishing wineries and breweries. So long story short, decided to start our own microbrewery in about 2008 okay. at the brink of the you know financial disaster that's a different story and so we were founded then and we started with two used fermenters and now we have 19 and uh, we're up and running. And where did you start the business? With? In Fremont. In, okay, so okay. Fremont is a neighborhood in Seattle, pretty okay. much in the heart of Seattle. Okay. And we never thought that we could afford square footage right in town, but we found okay. a warehouse that needed to be completely gutted and reworked, and so um, we rented that. We sublet half of it to a company that used our spent grain to make clean energy, so that was a startup. So wow. got our rent partly paid for and started that relationship, got us on the map as a green Green, you know, brewery with some, you know, sustainable principles. Right. And then um, just grew. And part of our growth was starting a beer garden right in the neighborhood because it's a, it's a really. For those of you, your audience might not know Fremont, right. but it's um, it's right across the street from a from a, a bike trail, the Burton Gilman Trail. Beautiful runners, riders, you know, lots of tech companies, but it's also funky artists and independent businesses, and so. Uh, the community welcomed us, and we were happy to be there, and it was a great synergy. Wow. So, And for our audience members out there to learn more about Sarah and her husband's great company, Fremont Brewing Company, go to www.fremontbrewing.com, fremontbrewing.com. So now let's talk about your Fremont Brewing and the green evolution from 2008 when you started mm -hmm. to 2015. How has the journey been, both in terms of growth as an eco and entrepreneur, but also in terms of sustainability and then extending the recycling of the, your grains and what other things have you done? So just, you know, let's walk through the last seven years. Well, so small businesses are usually on uh, mission critical, critical, you know, crisis management all the time. So right. it's the, the big constant has been this value and uh, the value of sustainability that we've tried to maintain as a core value and you know, giving beer to all environmental organizations and schools. We fuel the overbuilding at the overbidding of auctions across wow. the region. But um, so we buy what we can afford. Uh, so basically we do, we, the low hanging fruit is easy. You know, it's the, uh, so when that startup left and we had all the spent grain, we now produce eight to 10,000 pounds of spent grain a day. Mm. So 
what are we going to do with that? Well, it's a higher and better use to um, provide it to farmers than to put it in the city's waste stream or, you know, in, in, to city grove, uh, cedar grove composting. So right. we have found relationships with farmers to take our spent grain. Um, we use, we made the decision to use cans and not bottles because the recycling uh, content in cans is vastly higher. It's lighter, less emissions to travel, it, it stores better, less refrigeration required. So the, the, the production processes, decisions that we've made um, reflect our sustainability and um, just trying to make sure that the people that we've got with us um, also share our values. Our employees are great. Um, you know, it, sustainability isn't just environmental, it's also social and economic. And so we uh, treat our employees well, free health care, 401k with 3% match. So it's about creating a community that can reflect our, our values and um, that generates business so that we have money to grow and continue doing the right thing. Is it, is it, is it fair to say that being sustainable and being green and messaging it, messaging what you're doing, is good for the bottom line? I think so. Uh, I would like to think so in the in our community, yes. Um, we have that reputation. As we grow beyond, right now we're just distributed in Washington. As we grow beyond Washington, are the people in, I don't know, Idaho going to know about our reputation when they're choosing a beer off their shelf? No. Is the executive at Kroger going to really care? I don't know. So um, profitability and sustainability, I would I have to say, um, we do it because it's the right thing to do. Got I it. wish that I, I mean, I It's part of your very, DNA and culture. Yeah, and that's I mean, we don't have very many, very many investors, so I don't really have to make a business case for everything that we do. Right. And um, how do you put an ROI on writing a check for an organization to plant trees? And plus, when we have to buy a big piece of equipment, that's an upfront cost, and the, you know, the financing is not driven by our return on investment in five years. We'll be saving this money on our water, whatever. So, yes, it's important, and a lot of it is is value driven. Right, and but those values have allowed you to not only you know uh, have a cultural and DNA yeah. uh, quality that have that has been attractive to right. your client base here, which is the city of. Seattle, which is, you know, the more you look around, walk around and, and see the, the, the business base here and, yeah. the, and the community, pioneers, innovators, and sustainability seem to be three of the, you know, the pillars and common themes right. of this whole community. And okay, so in, and that reputation gives us the platform to um, participate in the Washington, not the, well, the Washington Business Climate Declaration, but the National Brewery Climate Declaration. And that has a national reach. Um, you know, I go to D.C. to advocate for, uh, you know, the craft industry in federal excise taxes, you know, against the big breweries. And so, so I guess what, in answer to your question, yeah. you're getting to a more nuanced yeah. issue about sustainability. Yeah. You know, it might not, there might not be a clear benefit month to month with the cash flow. Yeah. But um, what we're doing is we are setting an example. Mm. We are giving policymakers some cover, uh, and that's important. Sure. And we're not going to be able to regulate our way out of the climate problem. What we can do as businesses is the right thing and um, help other businesses do the right thing. But because you and your husband have this in your DNA anyway to make the world a better place, the success of your business and because how right. you've run it, has now given you a bigger platform right. so you truly do have the opportunity yes. from the top down to make the world a better place. Right. That's great. Can I tell you something about our industry though? Were you going to yeah. ask me? All right. So, um, turns out beer is big business. Craft beer. Just craft beer. There, the number of new craft breweries increased by 19.7% just last year. So now we're at about 3,400 craft breweries across the country. Wow. Washington State is the fastest growing. 83, really? New York, 57, California, 52. New breweries last year. Wow. So what does this mean? What this means is that we're all buying really expensive equipment. And um, let's not, okay, besides the jobs thing, yeah, we're right. buying a bunch of people and we're buying right. local and all that trickle-down benefit to our communities. But we are, be I am hoping to become industry leaders in, in um, incentivizing uh, technologies that are scaled to small brewers. So I was just in, in this panel talking about the fact that 
Nobody's making a CO2 recapture system for my size brewery. Sierra Nevada has one that costs almost a million dollars. You know, but what I'm hoping is that through our activism and um, our example and the power of craft beer, that technology green tech companies will take notice and start thinking about scalable solutions for us. That is just wonderful. For our audience members that just joined us, this, we have Sarah Nelson with us. She's the co-founder and co-owner of Fremont Brewing Company. To learn more about Fremont Brewing and all the sustainable practices they use, go to www.fremontbrewing.com. You know, you're here today, we're here today at this Grow Green edition of Green is Good, and this is a wonderful conference. Talk a little bit about the panel you're on today and what the panel's topic was. Okay, so I was on a panel, it was basically the city and, and the private sector bridging uh, to make going green easier. And right. So they wanted to present their, um, their efforts to make it easier for businesses to go green. And so sure. the more that they can consolidate their services. When I started out in, you know, at the brewery, I had to go to three different offices to figure out what are the incentives for changing our light bulbs. And uh, so <laughs> they're in a constant process of mm. consolidating the services to be a one-stop shop for businesses. Uh, just make it easy for us. Small business owners don't have time to, they don't know who to call, and right. let alone three people. So basically, the panel was about their efforts and um, asking me and uh, the owner of a wildly popular um, pizza company, Pagliacci, um, you know, what could they do better? And so that's what we were talking about today. Let's talk about, you know, you just said wildly pop popular pizza company. You know, you're very humble. Talk about F Fremont Brewing. How big have you grown in the seven years in terms of regional breweries? Are you one of the larger breweries on, in Seattle and or in the region? Yeah. Okay, so um, we've had about 50 to 100% growth a year. Wow. And it depends on are you talking about sales or production, etc. cetera. But, uh, so we've grown very fast, and uh, we, we are now a regional brewing company. So wow. once we surpassed 15,000 barrels, it was 18,000 last year, yeah. uh, now we're a regional. Yes, we were one of the fastest fastest growing, uh, we are the fastest growing small brewery in Washington State. Uh, it depends on which metrics you use. Um, sales wise, we're very successful. So we're growing very fast. That presents its challenges. Sure. It always seems like, and now we're going to be engaging in a massive expansion in our production. So um, people buy your beer both on premise in the beer garden, but they also can find it in stores, local stores, in bottles. Yeah, so um, in cans. So oh, our, cans. We started out, we were going to be a wholesaler. Sell okay. pegs to bars. Right. And that was because we couldn't, we, all, we always wanted to can. Right. Put our beer in can. Right. But then we couldn't get a loan until a couple years ago to buy a canning line. So we finally got a canning line. Now, um, now our main business, more than bars and restaurants, is grocery stores, convenience stores. So that's our sort of off-premises market. And then we have a beer garden that we, um, that we, that's open seven days a week. It's kid and dog friendly. Um, we just keep building more tables and taking over the parking lot and people keep coming. And so uh, that is, that's fun for us because it's our front porch and it's uh, many people's first encounter with our brand. And, and beer and well, light food or is no. it? No. Um, <laughs> Sorry. We don't want to lose any more money. No. Um, <laughs> Uh, that's what people say. When are you going to get food? Um, we're licensed as a tasting room ah. because we're a production facility. Remember, my husband was a lawyer. Right. So, um, <laughs> so it's just a tasting facility, a beer tasting garden room. type. We give away pretzels and apples, and then people can bring Pagliacci pizza. They can bring their food. They can have it delivered. We have menus of local restaurants. Wow. We also didn't want to compete against food establishments. Right. Um, and that's how so, it works. So people can eat at our place. And, and how many lines of your beer are in cans? We have uh, two regular all year round, our IPA, our interurban IPA in the yellow can. People say, I love your yellow can. And our universe sale pale. Fremont is consider considers itself the center of the universe. So that's why we, we called it universe sale. So anyway, two year round and then four seasonals. Um, right now it's the summer seasonal. And ale. where else can people buy Fremont beer in, in cans? Is it just in this region or is it outside of the region it's already? in Washington. That's it. Well, we don't tell Portland. <laughs> um, we're dipping our toe into Oregon. We've got a few accounts in Colorado. 
um, in a, a little bit in, on the Idaho border. And when California, is that coming in the, in the... When we get our new facility open and then we can make more. So we're at capacity now. We gotcha. cannot make more. We're and where's driven. that new facility going to be? It's going to be in Ballard, right down the street. Got so it's in the next neighborhood over. Gotcha. And it's just going to be production. It has places for big trucks to come and go and um, we'll have a lot more capacity And what happens there. to the original brewery then? It will become the small batch experimental Whoa. facility. We're keeping our tasting room because people love it. Love we don't want to move and yeah. we're called Fremont Brewing Company. That's so right. We can't be in you need Ballard. your roots. Yeah. You need your roots. So it's just basically an expansion. Talk a little bit about the steam, your element of using steam, uh, you know, to heat your water and how's that unique in the in the brewing industry? So I, um, it's it's not necessarily unique, but it's um, it's what the big big boys do. Okay. Um, it is much more efficient to heat water with steam, uh, partly because the latent heat um, retention and also our kettles are designed to have the steam wrap around them. Long story short, it reduces our natural gas usage by 50%. Uh, wow. But it was a huge upfront expense. Mm. I don't know when the ROI is, um, but we did it knowing that it was the right thing to do for emissions and also as we grow, it will become more efficient. Gotcha. And you know, you know, when you go to Whole Foods or other fine establishments to buy your uh, food and pr uh, produce now, things are becoming labeled more and more organic. Uh -huh. And we see that we've had many wineries on. You're our first sustainable brewery that we've had on. Mm -hmm. Green is good. Is the organic labeling uh, of products now coming to the brewing industry? And where's Fremont in that in that uh, process, if, it, if it's coming at all? I think organic will become more and more important. The um, And we're embarking on the uh, organic uh, certification for a couple of our beers that have organic hops and will have organic grain. And so, uh, and our, our hops are salmon safe. And so, um, yes, it will be a, an important, I think it'll be a, uh, what do you call it, a differentiator in the market. Got it. The difficulty is that grain, the um, grain, organic grain sourcing is, is difficult because they're big farms. We're talking about big operations. Mm. It's difficult for breweries of my size to find, a, you know, a dedicated source of organic barley. So um, those relationships have to exist, and um, what we're trying to do is incentivize uh, sustainable grain growing locally so that not only do we have the option to buy organic, we also have the option to buy um, local grains because that's a big part of sustainability is uh, you know local versus organic from far away. So it, there's always that balance and decision we have to make. Gotcha. We're down to the last two minutes or so, Sarah. Can you share with our audience members the Cowich product? Oh, the um, Cowiche, project. okay. Yeah. So, uh, Cowiche Canyon. Yeah, uh, That is west of Yakima, the biggest hop growing region yeah. in the country. And um, one of the uh, growers there at, wanted to grow organic hops on his property at the mouth of the Cowiche River that comes down from Rainier, and he needed a buyer and to make it, you know, to, to ensure that somebody would buy his, his hops. And so we entered into this relationship in 2010 and it is delicious. So we buy all of his hops and they're trucked over the, uh, the mountains and put into our kettle within 24 hours. And that becomes our um, Kawicha Canyon organic fresh hopped. Wow. Most, most beer, pretty much all beer people drink has pelletized hops. Fresh hop beer and then proceeds go to the Kawicha Canyon Conservancy. That is just awesome. That is just awesome. Sarah, please come back on Green is Good to continue the story and the journey of Fremont Brewery and the and the success, especially as you expand and get bigger and uh, and continue to grow the green message at Fremont Brewing. It's just been a delight having you on today. For our audience members out there to learn more about Sarah and her colleagues and husband, what they're doing at Fremont Brewing Company and sustainability in green, please go to www.fremontbrewing.com. Uh, Sarah, you are both an inspirational ecopreneur and entrepreneur and sustainability superstar and truly living proof that green is good. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you very much for spreading our message.